The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits for his word. Alleluia, alleluia. alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you. In my mind and on my lips. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and proceed him to the other side, while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on a mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. And during the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O oh, you of little faith. Why did you doubt? They got into the boat. The wind died down. They were in the boat and did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So it is the Sunday after the burial of my friend, Father Mark Beard. And if you haven't watched on YouTube the viral nature of his last homily before his death, which he did not know was coming, but I believe was totally prepared for. And it was there and then a week ago Wednesday that he lost his life. Or rather, he gained it because he went home. And I believe it was a triumphant coming home. One that we could never imagine and no ticker tape parade after the Super Bowl could ever match. Because it is truly and purely a love fest. No. We were friends in the spirit and in this life because we were kindred. Now his way of delivering is as different as his unique personality and spirit is. And so do I, but at the, at the center of it, at the core, is a relationship with love itself, with God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And in our case, we had the Blessed Mother on our side to help whisper into her son's ear, please son, please son for this one. For God can do more than any man could do or hope for because he is God. And he uses us if we choose to participate as witnesses and instruments of that love and the faith that he gives us. The truth, the knowledge of Jesus Christ is the knowledge of truth itself and recognizes that which is not truth or unholy or not good. But the purpose of this homily is not to judge. It never is. And it mirrors Jesus on the water 
telling each of us, O ye of little faith, why do you doubt? Because he tells us to not be afraid. Coincidentally, it appears that statement in Scripture 365 times, which means you can find a Scripture passage every day that talks to you about not being afraid. Don't be afraid of that which is created. It says in Scripture, be afraid of the one who can destroy your soul who made it. You see, that's the kind of God that's above the wind and the waves and earthquakes and fires and desolation and annihilation. God reigns, period. Now he made us puny, punny little things, but he made us according to his plan. And his plan is perfect even if the players are not. That is why it is so crucial for you to answer the questions that you have. Who am I? Why am I here? What is my purpose for life? You can ask him on a bar stool. You can ask him in an alley with a needle up your arm. You can ask him when the fire's coming and you have no way out or whatever is coming your way. That relationship with God is absolutely vital for your life. And it's not something that ever is about, you know, some kind of hopeful unity in a, in, in a festival with everybody with flowers in their hair. That's nice and everything. But you know what? It doesn't save your soul. That's the one thing that's priceless about you is your soul. And that's why it's so important to get your soul in line and in shape for eternity. You know, there is a point of demarcation there are boundaries in this life, but there's a great big boundary in eternity. And it is that fence that Father Mark is talking about. But the fence is owned by the evil one who wants to keep you bound and behind and on his side. But there's a gate. And there's only one gate. I'm sorry, fellas. It's not about any other name or any other theory, condition, cult, following, whatever. It's all about Jesus Christ. Because Jesus is the principal part of God's plan. And he sent his only beloved son to suffer and die for us. Not to go around and have festivals and, right, everybody gets high and goes home and then regrets it the next day because they feel like junk. Um, wait a minute. How do you know that, Father? You don't need to know. I know. Get the point? So trust me on this. You don't get in except through Jesus. And you need to be prepared. You just don't know when that accident is going to happen to you. When the doctor goes and says you have cancer. When the doctor says you've got some malignancy in your body. When somebody else gives you a diagnosis, I don't care what it is for you, your financial ruin, the loss of your reputation and honor and praise and glory, only to be humbled into nothingness because that's all we are. We are merely created dirt that God made. But what's important about that is he blew his very life, eternal life, into us. And that's just a fact. And every scientist, ultimately, if they don't know it now, will find it at the gate of Jesus Christ. There is no other explanation. There is no other theory. There is no other thing 
created or in the metaphysics that will help you. Only Jesus, our Lord, our Savior, our brother, our God. That's it. That's all there is. And that's why those of us who know God no longer are concerned with our own salvation. Because he told me, I will be with him. He has a place for me. And that's a promise. And the end of this story on earth. And the beginning of the one in heaven. But while I am here, it is my job. Like my brother said, it was his job on earth is to save your sorry butt. I'm not the savior, but I'll point you to him. I'll point you to the gate. I can guide you there if you like, if you wish. But there's a hunger for souls right now because the world is in peril. It's a moral peril because it's in the mortal and moral peril to be good according to God's standard. If you don't know the Ten Commandments, they're easily found in Scripture. And maybe not easy to follow all the time, but certainly capable, because God made them. You must first keep His commandments if you ever say that you love Him. And before you love Him, you have to know Him. That's how you know somebody, right? And then you fall in love with them. Not in a sexual way. I mean, in the greatest way. You fall in love with love itself. And it changes you and it makes you better. And it calls you to be the best person you can be, which is holiness. Those aren't my words, but they're still true. They're just a good way of saying it. So if you're hearing it, listen to it. I'm not asking you for money. I'm not asking you to believe in me. I'm asking you to believe in Jesus, which you can't see. But you can know him, feel him, see him in your heart. You can hear his wisdom and his encouragement in your ear. And your lips and mouth can proclaim him like no other creature no other creature can take words and music and sing those words in praise to God. It's called worship. We worship only God. And we worship only one God. Three persons in a mystery that is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit and yet fully God. I once was ignorant but it wasn't an innocent ignorance. But God decided to show mercy to me a great sinner. And if he's willing to do it for me he's willing to do it for you undoubtedly there isn't a person walking on this earth that's ever been created by man that is unable to be saved but you have to want it so it's in your heart because you're created to know God and no other person will ever fit that enormous space in your soul that only God can. That immensity can only be filled by God and not by any other person because humanly we are frail and we will fail each other. But that is when we choose to love. We choose to love our wife when she's a nag in the worst sense of the term. Because there's a good nag, there is. I won't go into it, 
but there's good in you. Because she loves you deep down. And you are called to love when you might not want to. It's still the same. We're called to love and forgive. Yeah, I know it's hard because people are hurt. Ask me how I know. The third time? I know. But I also know that in the morning there's a new day, a new dawn, a new beginning. The only day of your life is this day. This is the day to praise God. And if you don't know Him, Ask somebody who does. I know you know them. Or ask God to send the person to you. But no person is as good as when God comes to you. His beloved child. And says, I love you. And you will never be lonely again. Because I always will be with you. And when you're alone, you're alone with me. My brothers and sisters, God loves you more than you could ever imagine. And he wants you to be happy in this life, to find joy in the smallest of things. Be blessed this day in the name of the Father and the Son.